Uh, this bit is is correct. They turn infant's breath, my milk, and wrap her to a baby. That's talking about her newborn child. In day and in night to come. Day and night to come. It's showtime, folks. everybody and welcome to another episode of Into the Music. Uh, my name is John, that chap over there is Andy um, and we're here to listen to another fantastical tune. Um, before we get into that, just a reminder, if you do like the song, don't forget to hit the like button and if you're enjoying the wonderful work that we do and all the amazing tracks we bring you, please remember to subscribe and uh, join the rising tide that is into the music. That being said, Andy, are you up for the cup? Am I? I love the cup. As long as it's spilling over, I will, I will have whatever's in there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that being said, so, why don't you tell me what's in there? The cup tonight contains a song from a band. I'm guessing you've not heard of them. I don't. Uh, maybe. Um, they're called the Cocteau Twins. No. Um, no idea. Never heard of them. So you presume correctly, sir. Fair enough. Are they so French? The, no, they um, are Scottish. Oh, how about it? Mm. Um, and the track, which you've never heard of either, is called Fru Fru Foxes in Midsummer Fires. One more time. Because I have to look this up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more time. We're feeling frou through foxes in midsummer fires. I don't know what could be more simpler than that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I feel like I already know the song. What's the point, right? Oh, uh, let me go listen to this. <laughs> I'll, now, I'll be right before, okay. before you do, I, I'll just say that the link I've sent you, I did take it easy on you. Because the the um, they're famous for their indecipherable lyrics, so this is a lyric video to give you half a fighting chance of understanding what the hell's going on. So you can thank me later. You probably still won't understand any of it, but you know, go away and have a look and see what you think. All right, we'll do. tell you right now that I have no idea what the hell is going on, but this woman's voice is beautiful, like ethereal, otherworldly. Um, it has this haunting, like from the other side type sound to it. Um, 
which I think fits perfectly into the mood that this this really good music is creating. Um, I'm just lost in the sauce as to what the hell this is about lyrically, um, and I don't think I'm going to catch on. <laughs> but um, I am here for whatever's happening happening musically and vocally. Um, it's pretty beautiful stuff we're listening to right now. production with the harmonies and you know sort of the, the main portion of the lyrics if you will fabulous that sounded really great um, even though they kind of threw me a curveball with where the music went like the last from the last time I paused I hit play I'm like oh different place um, somewhere new but this is good this is not perhaps something I would have sought out or uh, something that I would listen to a lot regularly, but you can't deny what sounds good, right? Thank you. 
think that is it. Yeah, again, this is this is not what I would call my normal cup of tea. Uh, but there are beautiful qualities to its sound. Uh, different, new to me, um, and I and I liked it. I wonder what drew John to it and how he stumbled across it. Only one way to find out. So, what say you? Ah, uh, this this is really different. This is not what I would would have expected from you. I don't know what to expect from the name of the band. I sure as hell don't know what to expect from the name of the song. Um, so I went in there about as blind as one could go um, and was still somehow knowing that I had no expectations, surprised by, by what I heard. I, I wouldn't have associated this sort of, I don't even know what the hell you would call this genre. And I know you, you're not one for labels anyway, but caught me off guard. Just, just stylistically, whatever, caught me off guard. But then, you know, there was still plenty of song I had to listen to, so I, and I had to digest. Um, sort of 80s styles, like 80s style keys or synth was was like musically what I definitely picked up and leaning into. Um, I will say the one thing that I really did like about this song, because this song is like, I'm, I would have to give this another listen again and kind of like, and hopefully walk into it with some more information, because this one I think you need to, because I don't know what's going on with these lyrics or what inspired the name. Uh, but what I really loved was this sort of, I guess it was like ethereal or haunting vocals um, as the song sort of begins. And they change a little bit, but they this sort of, they come back to this theme where it is really haunting and you feel like that there, there's some immense gravity behind whatever it is this, this woman is, is singing about. Um, and there's one part where the lyrics and the vocals overlap and it sounds, it, it just sounds so pretty and the levels are so perfect. Like the production on making, not having one overshadow the other and making them really work in harmony is just exquisite production work. Um, especially given that this, I don't think is anything that was released of late. Um, so yeah, I was really, really impressed with that. This song for me, like most of what I like listened to and stood out to me was all about the vocals, to be honest with you, because there wasn't a lot of variance in the music. Um, and, I, and like I sort of alluded to before, this is not my normal genre or brand of music, uh, but it was, it was just really beautiful in the way it was sung. Um, but, you, and you're right, the lyric video did me a hill of beans. Like I, I, no idea what's going on with this. And um, it was, it kind of seemed a bit, I don't know, all over the mapish in, in trying to figure out from line to line what this is about. Um, so you're going to need to help me out on this one, John, this one is going to require some handholding. Fair enough. I will say off the bat, um, this was, I think, in our parlance, this wasn't like um, you know, home run. This was a tester. Okay. Um, and that's why I thought, oh, I'll give this to Andy to see what he thinks. But I didn't necessarily think you'd like it, but I thought perhaps you would, perhaps you wouldn't. But I think the thing that you would gravitate most to would be her voice. And then I, that's when I thought, shit. I've got to give him some lyrics to look at at least, because otherwise he might be, he must be think this is in Swedish or something. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, right. So I'll tell you a bit about the band and then we'll get into the song. Sure. So Cocteau Twins um, formed in uh, Grangemouth in Scotland in uh, 1979. Mm. Um, just as an incident aside, um, me and my best friend went up many years ago to Scotland to go and see a football match. And we stayed the night in Edinburgh. And then the following day, we drove across to Falkirk um, to see this footy game. And we drove past Grangemouth. Um, and it's on the estuary, estuary of the uh, River Clyde. Oh, man, I'm really showing up my lack of ge geography of Scotland. But basically, there's a massive oil refinery there. And it's just these ugly buildings and balls of fire shooting out 
And my best mate looked at me and he says, ah, that explains everything. I said, what? He says, oh, my dad was born in Grangemouth and he's a miserable bastard. And looking at that, now I know why. So that's where they came from. Um, so uh, Robin, Robin Guthrie he plays guitars and, and other bits and pieces, programmed the drum machine. There's a chap called Will Heggie on bass. Um, he left in 83, replaced by a guy called Simon Raymond, who's a multi-instrumentalist, they say, but mainly bass, but lots of other things. And then they were joined by Elizabeth Fraser in 81 vocals. I will say off the top of my head, she has got one of the most iconic voices in you know mm. modern music. Um, and she's guested on, there was a, I don't know if, I think Greg's done a reaction to it. It was called uh, A Songs of Siren. Um, but she guessed it on that. She she also sung on um, Teardrop by Massive Attack. Mm. That was her. She's a little bit more intelligent, intelligible there. But um, yeah, she has one of those great soprano voices. Um, but she has, through most of her career, you can't make out a bloody word she's saying. Mm. It's just you think you just admire the beauty of the of the of the vocals. So they produced a few albums over the years. Their debut album was 82, called Garlands, then Head Over the Hills in 84. Victoria Land in 86 was a cracking album, and that kind of set the bedrock for dream pop as we know it mm. today. Okay. And also, them if you combine them with Jesus and the Merry Chain, you get Shoegaze. Mm. basically two of the things you know in terms of their musical structure they then produced um uh, an album in 88 called blue bell knoll which is a bit more muscular and i really really like the album a lot and then this came out heaven or las vegas in 1990 and it's considered by most to be their magnus opus um it's all it's considered like in terms of dream pop the greatest um album of dream pop um, it's funny you mentioned dream pop because i don't really have any experience with it outside of knowing it exists um and the the two adjectives i use to describe her voice being like ethereal and haunting i think are very dreamscape like descriptors uh so this is this checks this checks out then like this makes total sense to me as to like her sound is perfectly cut for a genre with that name. You know what I mean? So this is, yeah, that was really cool. cool. In terms of the, um, the labels that Wiki provides, um, post-punk, which is what they started off as, you know, any, any band in Britain at that time was called post-punk. <laughs> um, Gothic rock, dream pop, and ethereal wave, which is oh, an ethereal shit. version of new wave. Yeah, <laughs> they're just making it up as they go along, aren't they? Yeah. Um, they did two more albums after this and then split. I don't really know the, the next two albums off very well at all, so I can't comment on them. But this is my favorite. Um, they were in a relationship, Robin Guthrie, the guitarist, and Elizabeth Fraser, the vocalist, for many years. And at the time of this album, she was when they were working on it she was expecting her first child with him um let me just go to my notes a second so i did grab it here we go so yeah unfortunately his cocaine habit had escalated during the process for the previous album I and mean, they thought this new baby would provide a diversion from his dependency and allow them to play happy families and it didn't pan out that way um he became even more heavily reliant on drugs uh, deep paranoia, mood swings, and his relationship with her strained and then collapsed. Um, they, she actually had uh, her, their first child, uh, Lucy Bell, um, in September '89, and this album was released on the day of her first birthday in 1990. Mm. Um, during the recordings, actually. Guthrie was so out of it, he spent less and less time in the studio. And actually, the other guy, Simon Ramon, um, he stepped up um, and had more to do with production. Um, he actually wrote this song. And he wrote it the day after his father died. Mm. And like um, the album contains a few themes. One of them is about sort of new parenthood and, you know, 
with this little baby coming into the world and the responsibility to her. And this song is a blend of, of birth and death. That's the idea behind it. And the various, um, sometimes there's sort of non sequiturs that come out, and other times there's sort of hidden meanings, sort of things that she, I don't know how she remembered all the words, it's amazing, but um, I'll get into the lyrics in a second. But Raymond, he uh, recounted that he would record um, Elizabeth Fraser's vocals alone for days at a time, during which he first fully appreciated how amazing she was. I mean, he's been in a band with her for seven years, but he first appreciated. So you'd come into the control room and say, what was that like? And I'd scrape the tears away and say, that was all right, Liz. She didn't get off on praise. If I said that was fucking amazing, she would, she would say, I thought it was shit. I learned not to be too effusive, which was difficult because I was so blown away with what I was hearing. Mm. So after 20 years together, the band disbanded in 1997, um, really due to the, mostly due to the issues from the disintegration of Rachel. Fraser and Guthrie's um, uh, relationship. So um, I'll get into the lyrics. I have them already here. I don't know if these are the same as the video, but we'll run with these, eh? Everyone's got an opinion. Um, <laughs> so, through through foxes in Midsummer Fires. As I say, he wrote this after, the day after his dad died. So, I, and it, it, it talks in another interview about how important his father was to him. So, at the time they're doing this album, it was a very, you know, formative time for all of them. They were starting a family. He was getting over the first sort of major death in his life. Um, so, the lyrics: I buckle and rose as God and the rest. How mere riches be a war, or we lose. Close into symbols. A fly drinks the ignitions question mark now this bit is is correct they turn infant's breath my milk and wrap her to her baby that's talking about her newborn child in day and in night to come can't say it um their little hands smooth all things ad nauseum i love that line <laughs> um Sing by it, pulled around of my blazing, pulled around. Eyes on the unusually science of cherry-coloured trousers. Limelight, not the music, is plain as so as can be so tighter. All of the time I improvise by making sure tighter is to wait for you rounder, pull rounder, pull rounder, pull rounder. I'm not going to go on because I mean, we're not going to get any sort of clear of that. There is... I couldn't find um, the actual article. I've read it about six weeks ago. Someone posted an article about this, um, sort of uh, putting forward a theory that actually the lyrics are snippets from all the other songs of the album. So there's various um, themes within the different songs, and this is the culmination of the, the whole album. So for it to make sense, you're going to have to listen to the whole album <laughs> many, many, many times and report back to me in three months' time. And tell you what you think. Mm -hmm. Break down where each, the derivation of each lyric from what other song it came. Yeah, that shouldn't, yeah. that's not a tall order. But, but well, there's a song called Cherry Colored Funk. And so when they mention eyes on the usual signs mm -hmm. of cherry colored trousers, that's referring to that. Uh, but yeah, I think the lyrics are what you make of it. So the idea behind it is is basically birth and death. Is that yeah. going and her kid coming? Which is nice. It I is, think, but, and it's it's just interesting that two different bandmates are dealing with the opposite ends of the spectrum in kind yeah. of real time, and they've created this song that is kind of like an amalgam of that, um, which is, I mean, it's sad and but relatable, um, and yeah, just an interesting, interesting tune to to sort of marry those two things, like the bringing in of a child and the. Um, departure of a parent or a loved one like that yeah i mean, I mean for me cocktail twins have been around forever and we were listening to them in the mid 80s um they were another sort of indie band they're much championed by john peel who everyone in my sort of circle listened to at night um they did a great song called pearly dewdrop drops and they had competitions for people to try and work out the lyrics to that and no one got close 
you know, and they did, we didn't have the internet then, not that it's much help now, but, you know, it, but it, they were uh, uh, otherworldly, I think, is, the, you know, your first reaction to these, as you say, ethereal, there were sort of gothic noises there, and then it became these dreamscapes. Um, there's a great song called Ivo uh, of Victoria Land, which is just fantastic. Um, and yeah, I've always liked them, and they are very, very different to just about everything else I listen to. Mm. Um, I think it's a mood thing as well. I think you have to be in a certain mood. Um, but you put this album on a sunny day in the car for a nice road trip, and it's just amazing. Um, and you can ignore all the sort of traffic jams and pollution around you and just go floating off into the clouds mm. with this, uh, this lovely voice. So I it's thought it was something in... Go on. I was going to say it's got a very soundtrack quality to it. Like it would be the perfect song to convey a, a, a scene that has a lot of like emotional weight to it in film or, or what have you. Um, and so when you're just, it, it's one of those songs that you could easily describe a scenario to couple with um, as you did with the drive and, and so forth. So yeah, um, it's very artistic stuff. There's no question there. Yeah. And massively influential. Um, on the particular the British music scene. And I guess now, probably in the last 10 years, you see the, the huge rise in dream pop in the States, particularly female-led dream pop, you know, with female vocals and two or three cents and all that. There's mm -hmm. loads of it about, you know, not saying that I particularly like all of it, but um, that's kind of the legacy of this and the previous albums. So uh, it's good to see so have no evidence to this day. Uh, Interesting. Cool. One, one more thing before I wrap it up. What inspired the name of the band? The name Cocktail Twins, you say. Funny you should ask. <laughs> the name comes from a song by fellow Scots band called Simple Minds. And they had a song called Cocktail Twins. And it's about two men in Glasgow who had a reputation for being pretentious film snobs with a fondness for the work of French auteur Jean Cocteau. Okay. So there you go. Um, and he was a very famous artist and French film director. Who oh, you don't say. Fantastic stuff, yeah. But I'll tell you about that another time. By all means. All right. Well, thanks for all that information, John. I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to put a bell on this. Everybody out there in Into the Music World, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for giving this a view. And as John said to start the video, please like, share, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, John, I really appreciate you, man. And I want to thank you for giving me this song that kind of made me think. Uh, made me a little uncomfortable, but it made me think, and I've come around on it. So that's, that's high praise. And um, until next time, we'll see all y'all on the next episode of Into the Music. See ya.